Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really uh, my pleasure to welcome you to this joint uh, Civica online webinar. Um, my name is Enora Pelaric. I'm the Civica manager at the Hertie School. Um, and um, today um, I really have the pleasure to moderate this event um, about um, European governance and the economy. Um, and uh, we are thrilled to have you join us today for a very engaging and insightful discussion where we want to discuss uh, careers in European governance and the economy uh, with a focus on Europe, but not only. So throughout this, this webinar, um, we will explore some of the very interesting questions around how three of the Civica partner universities uh, with uh, great representatives around here um, prepare the students to successfully launch their careers in the labor market. Um, and our panelists today are experts in the field, so I'm very glad to welcome Veronica Sullo, uh, who is Graduate Recruitment Manager at Bocconi University in Milan, uh, Mikita Stefko and Anita Wisniewska, who are both admissions officers at the SGH Warsaw School of Economics in Poland, and um, Martin Leitzen and Chiara Battistelli, who are respectively International Affairs Officers and Internship and Career Officer um, at the Florence School of Transnational Governance of the European University Institute. Um, so really, uh, thank you to our panelists and to our participants for joining today. Um, we encourage you as participants to um, keep your cameras um, on so that we have a more engaging and lively um, event. And also to ask uh, questions at any time uh, during the presentation in the chat so that we can also do quite a lot so we cannot uh, have a, an extensive Q&A session, but we're happy to answer any question you may have directly uh, in the chat. Um, so maybe let me start by uh, presenting why we as Civica are organizing um, this webinar and I will um, share now a little presentation um, for you. So. So Civica um, is the organizer of this event. Um, we are an alliance uh, that was founded uh, in 2020, a 10-member alliance uh, gathering excellent uh, universities in the social sciences and business, humanities uh, around Europe um, in nine countries. Um, so we have today uh, the Università Bocconi in Milan in Italy, um, the EUI, which is also in Italy, but is an intergovernmental institution. Um, I represent Hertie School in Germany uh, as a moderator, uh, and we have the SDH uh, Warsaw School of Economics, but we also have uh, representatives in Spain, Romania, Poland, Sweden, and Austria. Um, what are our objectives uh, with this alliance? Um, we want to address current and emerging challenges, um, in the social sciences, in education, in research, uh, and in outreach, so um, civic engagement opportunities and also uh, making sure that we disseminate the results of our research. And one key aim for us is to give the next generations of Europeans the knowledge and tools to understand and influence uh, an increasingly complex world. So we're really training um, policy leaders um, and policy experts, but in a very broad sense, um, to be equipped to answer the big challenges that we're facing today. And we also envisage to really uh, create a critical mass to advise policymakers on the challenges faced by societies. So we work hand in hand with the civil society and, and go out of our university walls. We uh, focus on four thematic priorities. Um, and we think that these are among the, the biggest challenges we're facing. Um, societies in transition and crisis of Earth, strata-driven technologies for the social sciences, Europe revisited, and uh, challenges of democracy in the 21st century. And um, around these four topics, we offer a range of opportunities for students at bachelor, master's, doctoral levels to engage in courses, extracurricular activities, mobility opportunities with exchanges and dual degrees, for instance, um, so that they can engage with these topics, learn from one another, and have a properly European experience. Um, and at Civica, we really firmly believe um, about the importance of studying politics and European governance, um, 
really related also, of course, um, disciplines, very um, important range of disciplines related to politics and policy making. Um, and I'd like to, sorry, <laughs> to share this quote um, um, that it really reflects what what we are trying to equip our students for. It's a quote from uh, Roberto Amarosino, who is senior HR specialist at the World Bank Group in Washington, D.C. And he says, um, successful professionals in today's world and in the years to come are expected to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of governance and public policy challenges for both public and private sectors. In this respect, studies and learning tools capable of providing deep and broad international multidisciplinary exposure exposure would help to produce the talent pool needed in both developing and developed countries so this is really uh, i think what we are our excellent universities here um, in the panel are trying to do and i'm really uh, happy to to go back to our panelists and um and to ask them um a bit more about the first topic that we would like to discuss today and it is uh, what the education systems uh, are doing to become more responsive to um, the labor market um, today and to support the employability um, of their graduates. So first, I'd like to um, to move to Chiara um, and to ask, uh, ask you, Chiara, how career counseling services work at the School of Transnational Governance in Florence and how you prepare your students uh, for the labor market. Thank you, Enora, and uh, uh, again, good afternoon to everyone uh, connected. Um, I work at the Florence School of Transnational Governance for the taking care of the internships and career services for the students indeed. And linking a little bit back to what you said that uh, all of the schools in this partnership is trying to offer and to prepare students for the uh, job market in the vast area of policy making and governance. We also try to train future policy leaders and uh, policy makers that are able to, to tackle the today's world uh, most pressing global challenges that can go from climate to migration to disinformation, uh, democracy, conflict resolution and security. So to um, to create these profiles that are ready to tackle these global issues and come up with innovative and creative solutions. We um, obviously we provide a training uh, of basic uh, and uh, solid academic foundations. My colleague Martin later we go into details of the academic offerings, but basically we couple this academic knowledge because a policy leader needs to have the subject expertise. But not only that, we um, also train uh, future leaders providing them with the professional and soft skills that are nowadays very much wanted in the job market. What are future policy leaders must have? You will, you all will see in all job description recurring um, skills such as communication skills, analytical skills, research skills, in, uh, understanding intercultural diversity. Um, Again, um, soft skills such as negotiation. So basically, on top of the academic uh, curriculum, we provide in parallel uh, what we call career pathways workshops that are uh, the, giving to students these professional and soft skills that nowadays are wanted in the market. So we have workshops such as communication skills, negotiation skills, uh, but also ethical leadership, uh, how to write a research proposal, how to write a policy briefing, um, English prof uh, proficient English writing skills, um, qualitative and quantitative methods. And again, on top of this, we also expose through the career services our students to uh, international organization, EU, EU um, institutions, um, think tank, NGOs, foundation, uh, also private uh, sector um, worldwide spread. So we send our students as a compulsory part of our program to a curricular in to a curricular internship. Now my sound is bouncing back. I don't know if you can hear me well. 
so we have a curricular internship um, term between the first and the second year that is designed in this way. The first year is really gives students the best, the, the, the academic foundation. The second year is more about specializing in one of these tracks from climate to conflicts to artificial intelligence, governance uh, um, and democracy and citizens. Between the first and second year, students must undertake a curricular internship. We work with in international partners such as the World Bank that you mentioned such as the UN agency, EU institutions, again, foundations, uh, think tanks, NGOs from Latin America to Europe, obviously, and uh, Asia. When students come back, already have a better idea what they want to do in life. So also thanks to the workshops that we are providing that start from self-assessment, self-awareness. Am I good or better for a research career or a professional one? Um, how to read the job description because that's the starting point of uh, you know in this big world how what a UN agency does what a European institution how does it really work how to read the job description how to know the different policy area and sector how to write a uh, uh, very good global CVs that stress uh, these global competencies that we are training the students for, from communication to negotiation, research skills and so on, how to run uh, winning inter job interviews. Uh, we also prepare them with mock interviews with more senior professionals. And then we, ca we call uh, the, the diverse types of organization on campus virtually, such as uh, European Commission, the Parliament, uh, again, the UN, uh, some well-reputed think tanks in Brussels uh, and other research uh, institutions to describe to the student what it's like to work in their organization, what it, how they work, what's the structure, what's the skill set that they need uh, and what, are, what is their entry doors, what are the, what's the application process like, what the, the selection procedure. So we try again to finalize, to put together theory, practice, also because the approach is very hands-on uh, and we do not, not only have academics, but also practitioners from the business and policy world. We couple this with soft and professional skills, and then we expose them to the bigger network whether this is an inside EUI with more senior fellows and with the external potential employers, basically in a nutshell, that what the, our career services is doing. And now we try to prepare the student to go beyond, as we say, the, the, the School of Transnational Governance. And these I will talk Thank about this so later, but yeah, we have yeah. examples on how we have done that with alumni. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chiara. And uh, there's also uh, there are also very interesting links in the chat. I encourage you to have a look at them. But um, now I'd like to move to Annetta from the SDH Walser School of Economics and um, to ask you in your experience and the experience of uh, SGH, um, how education institutions align their offers with the needs of the labor market. And I know you have a slide, so I will uh, share it right away um, so you can... Please. Thank you, Enora. Thank you for introduction. Thank you for um, uh, for the webinar and possibility of uh, participating in it. And of course, good afternoon uh, for everyone. Um, in the context of this question, I would like to mention our uh, partners Club. SGH runs the Corporate uh, Partners Club, which uh, brings together uh, Polish and international companies um, specializing in various industries. Uh, this cooperation is uh, a great source of knowledge. It allows um, uh, for us to um, understand um, uh, the expectations of uh, employers for their future employees. Uh, at the, uh, on the slide, you may uh, see uh, examples of companies uh, which we cooperate with. Uh, the full list uh, is available at our website. Uh, our partners uh, participate in the SGH uh, events like uh, the career days, like uh, uh, students' uh, job fairs. Student job fairs are also um, organized by the Students' Council of SGH. Um, our partners uh, offer um, internship programs for our students. 
they give them lectures and uh, participate in research, um, scientific researches. Uh, what is more, we conduct together uh, meetings, conferences, um, uh, recruitment events. Uh, well, uh, we believe that uh, such cooperation um, uh, is um, uh, allows educational uh, institution to better understand uh, the needs of labor market and um, as a consequence uh, universities will create programs of studies which uh, meet those needs. Uh, our work together um, uh, strengthens the position of SGH as a leading economic university. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we support our partners in their um, recruitment and employer branding um, strategies. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I uh, actually know that uh, in the context of Civica, uh, Civica students were invited to the Warsaw School of Economics recently and had very engaging and interesting workshops with your corporate partners. Actually, um, I've had very interesting feedback on this as well. Um, so now we're here again in the context of Civica as an international alliance. And Veronica, I'd be really interested to, to hear from you if you have examples uh, from Bukoni University on how collaboration between universities uh, support students in integrating different labor markets and, and finding uh, their professional uh, path. Absolutely, thank you, Nora. Well, uh, we have been talking about a lot of skills and competencies and knowledge is needed for today's and tomorrow's job market. There's one more interesting skills needed, which is intercultural skills, uh, foreign languages, uh, uh, being able to uh, deal with people from different cultures, uh, because this is nowadays already here. This is what we have been doing so far to organize this web and this is nowadays uh, uh, job life. Mm, at master level, uh, many universities have partnered together like the Civica uh, group, but also I'm sure you are familiar with the SEMS, the community of European management schools, uh, but also there are many other, let's say, um, associations and also uh, relationships among universities to allow students the more diversity and richness possibility uh, possible within the one year or two year of master programs. Especially, I would say at Bocconi, for example, we have 35 deals for double degrees at master level, but 280 partner universities for exchange programs for both bachelor and master level. We started, you know, in 1974, so before the Erasmus program started in Europe with the idea really to allow students to have more and more international experiences that can uh, be useful in their future job life, but also bring uh, foreigners into our campus and make it more diverse every day. Generally speaking, the idea of a double degree allows students to get um, two degrees from two prestigious universities usually, like uh, the ones that are here today, but also for the other networks. And uh, besides learning from two different uh, teaching methods, uh, learning styles, you know, a more theoretical one. If you think uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon countries like US and UK, you might have a very different uh, way to approach learning and teaching, oh, but especially uh, the idea of uh, having two job markets available for you in the future. You will graduate from two universities, you will have uh, the brands uh, of all the universities written in your CV, and with this will open up, uh, uh, let's say, in a very uh, broad way, the job market. I wouldn't, uh, let's say, not, not even limit to this. I assume uh, today we are talking among uh, European students, but 
but if you consider uh, Europe is a big job market, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit older than you. At my times, it was a bit harder, you know, to go to work uh, if I'm Italian to France or Germany or uh, Sweden or Spain. Now this is the normality. Don't give it for granted, but this is something again that uh, allows uh, students uh, coming from international university with good uh, double degree or exchange opportunities to have more, uh, let's say, visibility in the job market. So sometimes also I know students who have been studying in Italy with a double degree or an exchange in Spain, and now they are working in Germany or in UK. I know here also among the staff members of Civica, we have similar examples. We work in an international environment because we have been having international experiences in in the past. So if you are also interested in uh, looking beyond, uh, you know, your borders, uh, this is definitely something that will be very valuable uh, in the job market of tomorrow. Thank you so much, Veronica. And yes, definitely uh, exchange programs and dual degrees. I can attest uh, about this are really uh, a great way to enrich your CV. And as a French person working now in Germany, uh, this was definitely my experience, and I think uh, a lot of our colleagues can can attest about this. Um, so thank you so much, and and Veronica, you you've been you've been talking about these opportunities, but I think now we're all very curious to hear a bit more uh, from our panelists about the special offers and programs uh, in their respective institutions relating to the topics of European governance and and the economy. So Veronica, if you could. Uh, please share a bit more about the programs at Bocconi. I think we're all very curious to hear. Sure, Bocconi is a mid-sized university. Here you can see one side of the campus and it's uh, uh, it hosts more than 15,000 students. Very small university for Italy, if you consider the biggest one in Bologna and Rome with hundreds of thousands of students. But it's also, I think, one of the most international with more than 100 nationalities. Consider we started offering programs entirely in English in 2020. 2001, more than 20 years ago. And so now uh, even Italian students study in English and appreciate the multicultural campus. In the next slide, you can see our recognition in international rankings for masters in subjects like in the QS ones. This is a suggestion for all of you looking at universities check the rankings of the subjects you are interested in, and uh, you might find universities you are not thinking about, for example. And also I would like to draw your attention to the ERC, the European Research uh, uh, Council funds, uh, grants that uh, the European Commission provide to universities for uh, research projects. And this is again one thing you, can, you may want to consider when looking at universities for uh, research uh, or to um, pursue a career in academia. Let's get to the programs that Bocconi University offers for the, um, let's say, for the area of uh, governance and politics. Uh, Bocconi offers two-year Master of Science programs, one in pure economics, the economic and social sciences one, one which is a business program but specialized in a particular industry, the public administration or international organizations. And last but not least, we have a program in uh, the one, only one in a degree in political science, the program in politics and policy analysis. As said, it's two year programs where in the second year you can specialize um, and you will see it in a minute. For sure, like also other colleagues pointed out, all programs provide exchange and double degree opportunities. You see just a screenshot here. Just just to uh, spend a few words on the differences between the programs, the program in management of government and international organization has majors that are specific of industries, the international organization, the public management, more and more popular since the COVID, the healthcare, hospitals, or international organizations like the uh, WHO. 
control or sustainability again something that every type of industry and company is going to need uh, from today yesterday tomorrow in general you will see some of the partners uh, there's RT Berlin as well uh, for double degrees the program in politics is a real program in political science and you see from some of the subjects that are highlighted that it's very rigorous very quantitative uh, more intended to those who want to evaluate and work on uh, policy on public policies last but not least the more theoretical program I mean, economic and social sciences that uh, I would say bring many students to academia and uh, PhDs uh, at MIT, Boston, Yale, and so on. But uh, just uh, before uh, giving the mic, uh, the mic to the other universities, the program in economic and social sciences is also the one that allows students either to work in bankings like uh, the uh, European Central Bank or as economists in organizations like the United Nations or the European Parliament. But we will talk about careers a bit later and I give the floor to SGH. Aneta, please, we're now quite curious to hear about the STH Warsaw School of Economics. Thank you very much. Uh, I will continue. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Nikita. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so uh, SDH uh, is uh, the best economic university in Poland. And on the next slide, can you switch, please? Uh, on the next slide, you can see uh, our offer. So let's start with the uh, uh, bachelor degree programs. Uh, so it's global business finance and governments, international economics, management and quantitative methods in economics and information systems. And as a master degree programs, we offer advanced analytics, big data, uh, finance and accounting with uh, ACCA accredited qualification, uh, which means that actually ACCA, it's a global recognized professional accounting uh, qualification. And it's nice uh, for our students to uh, have this information uh, in CV. Uh, also global business finance and governments and uh, international uh, business. Uh, actually, if you want to find out more information uh, about the details, you can find uh, uh, it on our uh, website because you can find uh, the link to our website uh, in the right bottom of the presentation. Uh, please, next slide. So now I want to uh, give you some information about the rankings. Actually, as I told before, uh, SGH Warsaw School of Economics is the best uh, economic uh, university in Poland, according to a uh, very famous uh, uh, Perspective Foundation. Uh, also, our uh, field of financing and accounting is first one in Poland, and the field of economics is second one. And the thing that we are very uh, proud of uh, is that we are the first uh, in a category uh, called uh, uh, graduates uh, in the labor market. It. And actually, that's true. We know this, and uh, we know that uh, our uh, alumni and uh, students uh, they are very desirable, uh, and uh, they are performing well uh, on the labor market. Uh, okay, so uh, please next slide. Uh, actually, um, I, I want to pay your attention on our accreditations. One of them is Equis. Uh, Equis is the accreditation for uh, the best business schools uh, in the world, and uh, SDH is one of them. And also uh, AMBA, uh, accreditation for uh, granted uh, to best uh, MBAs uh, programs uh, in the world. And uh, the latest news uh, is that also, according to Perspective Foundation, uh, that is Polish one, uh, our MBA, uh, um, uh, our MBA studies. Uh, the best one in Poland also. OK, uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, shortly, uh, I want to tell you about generally, I want to give you some information about career opportunities after uh, after SGH. Uh, 
and uh, yeah, so you can work in international government uh, and uh, non-government organization, organizations, uh, international companies in Poland uh, and worldwide, a public administration, uh, research centers, domestic uh, and international enterprises, media dealing with uh, economic uh, relations, or also uh, own your own business because uh, really often uh, mm, our our alumni and students they're just uh, you know businessmen uh, also some of them uh, for sure uh, are in Polish uh, Forbes 30 under 30 uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, also the interesting uh, fact uh, actually I think uh, it's uh, uh, enough uh, info from me for now uh, in the second part of presentation we will get back to this topic uh, and tell more about uh, alumni and their stories uh, but for now thank you thank you Thank you so much, uh, Mikita. And now we ha I have the pleasure uh, of um, going to the uh, Florence School of Transnational uh, Governance um, presenting uh, a Master in Transnational Governance. So, Martin, please. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, just please confirm that you can hear me well because I haven't spoken yet, so yes. you can hear me well. Excellent, thank you very much. So my name is Martin Leisen. I work with the Florence School of Transnational Governance, uh, Governance uh, at the European University Institute in Florence. And uh, I would like to introduce to you this program of, of Master of Transnational Governance. But before I do that, uh, just very briefly, as, as uh, <clears throat> we mentioned earlier, and Nora mentioned earlier, that uh, European, Un Un uh, European University Institute is an international uh, organization, so it's a little bit different from uh, the other partners, but we're very happy to be uh, the member of the Civica uh, organization. And within this uh, international organization, we have the Florence School of Transnational uh, <coughs> Governance, which is uh, a boutique uh, university in some ways. It's a bit smaller than, for example, our friends at Bocconi, uh, but we have a very high uh, faculty student ratio, uh, and this provides a very interactive learning curriculum. Uh, developed with the principle of building strong foundations for our students uh, and then allowing them uh, in flexible choices to support their various uh, career interests. And if we move to the next slide, uh, I can uh, uh, give you a quick example of how the program looks like uh, from the outside. This is a macro perspective. Uh, first semester and second semester are mainly, if we go from the left of the screen towards the right, uh, is mainly uh, the foundational course in policy and economics, also law and international relations. Uh, and then you have the curricular internship that my, uh, my colleague Chiara mentioned earlier in more details. And then in the third semester, which is the first, first semester of the second year, you have the opportunity to either to specialize, stay with us in Florence, or visit one of our uh, partner organizations uh, through the mobility component. And then you return and you write your master thesis potentially at, uh, in the fourth uh, term. And if we uh, go to the next slide, uh, I would like to introduce you a little bit more about what we mean by building strong foundations. Uh, we want to provide our students with very strong theoretical foundations to understand the basic intersections between policy and politics, actors and their actions, also economics and governance, and the implications of this, so that they understand how to maneuver and manage this very complex uh, uh, environment, especially when we're training the, the future leaders, also the policy uh, analysts of the future, that we want to give them this very good, strong foundation. And this is supported by the complementary courses that you can see uh, on, the, on the up corner, uh, which would provide them with the necessary analytical skills to engage uh, and conduct policy relevant research. This is very important when you're trying to move within this field to understand the context and be able to analyze this very complex environment. Uh, and as I mentioned before, after this is the first year, so during the first year, you get the basic uh, theoretical and skill foundations. And uh, we have the curricular, sorry, just uh, previous slide, please still. <laughs> uh, then we have the, the curricular internship that my uh, colleague Chiara uh, talked about. Um, this is between April and August, and this is really to provide an opportunity to, to put the learning to the test 
and, and gain a real world experience with the organizations that are actually engaged with governance and with policy making exactly in that field. So you can understand how we try to build the foundation, giving you the theory, giving you the skills, and then bring you in to the actual deep waters and test those. And uh, now if you could go please to the next slide. Um, this is the second year, and this is where we really want to put in the flexibility and allowing you to tailor your study program to support the career plans that you have. So we're trying to follow uh, very closely the industry standards in some ways uh, and the developments to provide you with specialization areas uh, to explore the really hot topics of the industry. And you can see in the in the kind of central left part of the screen, uh, this, the specialization areas that we work with, for example, AI and policy, that is a very, very hot topic these days, or tackling global challenges uh, such as climate change, uh, that we want our students to be able to choose from all these opportunities and tailor their uh, potential degree at the end to, to specialize in these areas. If you allow me just to portray uh, the faculty members that we work with that are real practitioners with real hands-on experience uh, that you can work with SDG, uh, I want to highlight some of the, the examples of the, of the sample courses. You see the crisis seminar is, is one of the favorites that I have and I attended it. Um, this is with our very own George Papa Constantino, who was the former uh, finance minister of Greece, who was leading the negotiations with the EU Commission and the IMF in 2009 at the uh, financial crisis. Who better can potentially provide you with the understanding of how to maneuver in this very, very complicated environment that we call transnational uh, than someone who has been at the negotiating tables with the very good hands-on experience and skills. Uh, if we just move on from uh, staying in this slide, <laughs> sorry, uh, if we just move to the, to the next bit, which is the, the mobility opportunity, because I mentioned it earlier that uh, in the third term, you can either specialize or you can decide to go uh, uh, on a mobility. And we have a number of very exciting top tier universities, of course, uh, with the outstanding Civica partners. Uh, that we have Bocconi, Central European University, of course, Herty School, uh, but you also have very interesting international partners in Latin America, Asia, uh, such as uh, Universidad de los Andes in Colombia or Kei University in Japan. So you can also go and experience another academic culture, build your network, uh, learn how to move within different uh, environments, uh, put yourself out there a little bit, and then come back. And in the last semester, uh, you write your master's thesis with us on a topic of your specialization or anything else that you would like to choose. This is our program in, in very brief, and I'm very happy to answer you any questions if you have uh, further. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Martin. And at the Hertie School, we're glad to have exchange programs with uh, all your three uh, great universities as well. Uh, what our colleagues haven't mentioned, but I've been really lucky to visit the three universities and have to say that the three campuses or in their own, own way, absolutely breathtaking. So uh, I think this is also a strong a strong point from all these universities to have really, really nice campuses. Um, and I've had the pleasure of, of, of visiting of visiting them. Um, thank you so much. Um, again, uh, as uh, Martin mentioned, do not hesitate to share your questions in the chat um, if, if you want to know a bit more about these presentations. Um, but I think that all of you already now have questions uh, now that we've heard about these really exciting programs. How do we actually get in? Um, what are the procedures to apply? Um, and um, I very much would very much like to hear from the different panelists also if they have some recommendations and tips um, on uh, how to, to apply and what your institutions look for when you review uh, applications from candidates. So um, Veronica, please, could you... Um, Give us some more insight on this topic. From sure, thank you. Uh, I'm talking mainly about uh, Master of Science programs and uh, compared to Bachelor, I would say the evaluation process uh, for candidates is much more holistic. Of course, there is a more subjective side. Uh, if we look at the list of the elements of evaluation in the next uh, uh, slide, uh, there is a more subjective, objective side, sorry, based on a test, GMAT or GRE. And now we also have a Bocconi test that you can do 
case you are not interested in GMAT or GRE that you can use for many other universities, I guess, and your GPA. But at the master level, when you also focus on, we are talking today on career opportunities, on how this program, and this is again a suggestion for all the personal statements you will write for applications. Uh, how can the university help me achieve my dream job? Uh, how can, how, what I can bring uh, in uh, the classroom in terms of skills, knowledges, background? Uh, these are things that really are taken into consideration by the program directors to make sure that classes are as rich and diverse as possible, that you work uh, with uh, very different cultures and ways uh, again of uh, doing things. Uh, imagine a Spanish and a German working on uh, time management, just as an example. <laughs> So both uh, GMAT uh, or a more, uh, let's say, a more uh, uh, objective and official test score and your GPA are taken into evaluation. But again, uh, CV and personal statements can be very important. Uh, when you apply, you can choose more programs. You can select more programs for application. That's why I showed you different programs in the areas of politics and governance. And all the students who are attending or who attended in the past and uh, exchange programs program at Bocconi from all our partner schools have a special requirements and are waived the GMAT or the test uh, requirements. So big, big deal. Uh, you will see in the next slide the application rounds. There are five application rounds throughout the year. So basically from uh, we start in September until May, uh, you can apply twice in case you are not admitted. Uh, and again, you apply to you can apply to up to five programs uh, in uh, at the same time in one only round in one only application. Um, if you get to the next slide, we get the most important information with uh, for the students here. Here, uh, basically, your CV and the personal statement are uh, uh, also very much evaluated for merit scholarships, merit awards that uh, you don't need to apply for, but uh, the document sent for uh, application for admission will be evaluated for full scholarships. Basically, we award the scholarships to the top candidates uh, for each program uh, or to particular profiles that profi professors really, really uh, want uh, to get in class. We also have a full merit scholarship for female students admitted uh, in more STEM programs uh, because the industry is uh, asking us more female uh, professionals in finance, in data science, and so on. Students can also apply for uh, need-based scholarships. In Italy, we have the so-called diritto allo studio, the right to study. So uh, you can apply for financial aid through the Italian government and, uh, for example, Lombardy region for Italy. One interesting thing is related to student loans. We have have uh, more uh can I say British style student loans with Unicredit and Intesa San Paolo where the university guarantees for you upon one year after graduation so that you get a nice salary and you are able to uh, refund your investment. Generally speaking, the university helps and supports one out of three students in terms of financial aid with the contribution of more than 50,000 million euros thanks uh, especially to our partner companies and alumni who are really supporting uh, uh, future generation students. Thank you so much, uh, Veronica. And now uh, I'd like uh, to ask uh, Aneta from the Warsaw School of Economics uh, to share uh, some tips from uh, your university. Sorry, oh, thank you, Enora. Uh, so uh, our admission process is conducted online on the website of Internet Registration System. Candidates may create their account from uh, 4th of June. Uh, admission deadlines um, uh, depend on um, uh, depend on uh, candidates. Polish citizens, um, Polish candidates uh, have different, and international candidates have uh, different. Uh, 
registration for bachelor studies for international candidates starts from the 25th of June and ends on the 24th of July. Uh, in case of master studies, international candidates may start their registration from 11th of June and uh, the registration ends on the 24th of um, July. Uh, our admission process is very easy. It uh, consists of uh, three easy steps. The first one is creation of um, the account. Uh, at this stage, candidates uh, should um, fill in personal data, uh, upload uh, their photos, pay the application fee and register choose the program of uh, their interest of their future studies. Um, the second uh, stage is uh, submission application online. And um, at this stage, candidates should upload scans of the required documents. Uh, in case of uh, bachelor studies, um, we require a secondary school certificate with transcript of grades. In case of uh, master studies, uh, candidates uh, should upload their bachelor, master or equivalent uh, diploma uh, as well as a supplement uh, to this diploma. Uh, candidates uh, who would like to apply for studies in English uh, should also confirm the knowledge of um, this language at least at B2 level. If they don't have um, the accepted by our uh, our university uh, a certificate confirming knowledge uh, of English, don't worry, you may participate in the interview checking English language proficiency. Uh, after positive verification of the documents, uh, we will issue the offer letter for a candidate. Uh, the third uh, and uh, last step is just bringing original of uh, the documents to the admissions office. Um, I would like to say also a few words about our scholarships. So could you please, Andorra, change the slide? Thank you. Uh, we offer rector scholarships, uh, which is for the best students with outstanding academic results, uh, scientific or uh, artistic achievements or sports achievements in competition, at least at the national level. Um, Candidates may also apply uh, for the scholarship offered by the Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange. It's a separated um, department, separated institution. Uh, I encourage uh, candidates to visit their website to check information about scholarships programs. And thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Aneta, and I've already moved the slide, so um, now we'd uh, like to hear a bit more from Martin about um, uh, how how it goes at the Foreign School of Transnational Governance. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think we have one slide on the uh, deadlines. So we have three deadlines, uh, one of them, the, the early admissions window already passed, unfortunately, uh, which was on the 3rd of March, uh, and the up, the Upcoming deadlines, the 1st of May, which is the general admissions window uh, where you can uh, get access to partial uh, and full uh, fee waivers uh, based on the availability of the funds. So the first deadline, if you applied or if you would have applied by the 3rd of March, uh, is where you get access to full scholarships. Uh, there are fee waivers for not the country uh, citizens. Uh, you can also get access to 10% reduction or self-finance uh, candidates. Uh, and there's also as an early settlement of enrollment option here uh, that was, again, mentioning that was the uh, 3rd of March. Uh, the next upcoming window is the 1st of May, as you can see here uh, on the slide. And then uh, the last upcoming uh, window is the final admission window, which is on the 17th of June. Uh, and this is open to self-financing candidates, applicants who do not require a visa to uh, Italy. Uh, let me just very briefly go through the application checklist, but if you click, uh, if you actually QR uh, code shot the, uh, the QR code available on the screen, that it will direct you to uh, our website with the required information. Uh, so to apply uh, to the Florence School of Transnational Governance, you complete an application form, upload your CV, uh, the copy of your diplomas and transcripts, uh, and then you have to write a statement of purpose. Uh, as well, which I will talk a little bit about uh, uh, in a second, uh, just to mention the rest of the required documents, uh, an international language certificate, which is an IELTS or TOEFL, uh, 
and your ID cards, and you have to nominate two uh, references uh, from your academic life who will then receive a link and will be able to ask, uh, upload your, uh, your reference letter. Uh, so going back to the statement of purpose, I think this is where, uh, which can provide to be a very challenging exercise. Uh, and I have seen a number and I have done a number of statement of purposes and motivation letters in my life. Uh, some of the, the tips that I wanted to give you uh, that our faculty, for example, is looking for. Um, I have five tips for you. I'm sorry we don't have a, a slide on this one, but I'll try to be very clear. So first is to show genuine engagement. Uh, this is the opportunity where you can demonstrate your interest in the courses, the program you're applying for. So try to be as, as uh, genuine and specific as, as you can and avoid generic statements. Uh, this is where you can also look at uh, the particular modules that you're interested in, the professors uh, that you're interested in working with and try to, to align this with your academic interest. Um, the second point is try to be as specific as possible. Uh, try to avoid statements like I'm a motivated learner, but for instance, discuss a project where uh, you have experience, where you displayed your uh, independence of your academic thinking or your research skills. Uh, one of the things I think professors look for uh, the most in, in these uh, statements is how independent thinking uh, do you have? How independent are you in terms of thinking in academic research? Do you have ideas? Can you showcase them in an interesting and concise manner? Uh, so be very specific about what you are interested in doing. Um, the next point is try to emphasize your, your strengths. Highlight your strengths, especially those ones that are very relevant to the program that you're applying for. Uh, independent thinking, again, in research is highly valued in academia. Uh, Make sure to emphasize instances where you have demonstrated these qualities uh, from your professional academic life. Uh, the next point uh, is, is to make your statement as polished and well written as possible. This gives a very important impression of you that academics will highly value uh, if you pay attention to grammar, spelling, punctuation, that you ensure that your writing is clear and concise. This is highly, highly uh, valued. Um, and this is where you can demonstrate that you have care and attention uh, to detail, uh, not only just in the letter, but also in terms of your academic work. Uh, this would be my five cents of advice. And I'm also interested if, if other colleagues have uh, similar experiences. Uh, again, please uh, click on the links that are provided in the chat to find out more about uh, funding opportunities, fees and deadlines, and the uh, selection process at the uh, Learn School of Transnational Governance. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. And I think these are really great pieces of advice, not only to apply to programs, but to apply afterwards to, to jobs, right? So I think it's a perfect transition. Uh, we also started this, this webinar by discussing uh, career support and integration in the job market. So now I think we, we want to know a bit more from our panelists um, about what students do after graduating from these programs. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, Veronica. Could you please share some uh, alumni success stories from Bocconi University? Well, um, first of all, uh, we organize uh, again for master students from day one. Uh, you have a career coach uh, helping you also um, working on your uh, CV and personal statement for internship. We make sure that your uh, compulsory internship uh, is something that you land uh, by the end of the first year. Through this uh, book on jobs fair, in the photo you can see the one we do in Milano, but uh, I highlighted, for example, the one we do in Brussels, where our students can meet uh, local companies. We organize in company training events uh, where weeks, uh, basically, you will see uh, later where students can um, visit uh, institutions and companies in a particular cities, uh, as well as uh, recruiting dates, uh, like speed dates uh, with uh, many other institutions. I highlighted also the economist, the researcher, the academia uh, outcome, because I think in this area, in the politics, uh, governance, 
finance, economics, uh, it's something that many students end up with. Let's see a couple of examples of my students. Uh, Naomi is actually, uh, she wanted to be here today, but she is in US attending a semester abroad at Carnegie Mellon University within her Master of Science in Politics and Policy Analysis at Bocconi. She attended a bachelor in UK, so you can see she has already a lot of international experiences. You can see in the photos a couple of uh, uh, examples of in-company training visits uh, where a group of students is brought uh, by our career service to some uh, of the most important institutions in Brussels, DC, but we do it all over the world. In the next one, uh, you can see Sofia. She's Sardinian. She comes from Cagliari, from the south of Sardinia. Then she studied at Bocconi and she did a double degree in Sao Paulo at Fondasau Getulio Vargas. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation. She uh, started started the uh, internship uh, in, uh, at the UN uh, in Paris, uh, moving at the European Commission. What I like is that she moved to the private sector, becoming first uh, and a policy analyst at Amazon, and now she works at IBM in Brussels, be being basically a lobbyist. So she's the representative of IBM in the European Commission, in the European Parliament. So very interesting role. If I can add one more role that you can look on LinkedIn, uh, Victoria Gronchi, she attended the program in economics and management of government and international institutions with a double degree at Albany University in the US. And uh, as I told you before, she started working in the US during the COVID pandemic. So she was working at the uh, municipality of the city of New York helping in opening up uh, uh, COVID uh, test centers and now she works at Accenture in New York City so in the consulting world but dealing with healthcare and public policies. So again, just a few examples of the outcomes of studying politics or management and of government and international organizations at Bocconi. Let's see other examples from other universities. Thank you so much. Uh, and now we'll, we'll move to the Warsaw School of Economics. And uh, Nikita, could you Please share uh, with us some um, of uh, share with the audience and uh, what students are doing uh, after completing their studies at the Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, thank you very much for your question, Nora. Uh, to begin with, we are proud to know that not only our alumni, but uh, also students are really evaluated in the job market. And usually it's possible to find the first job in your field uh, uh, after two years of study. I mean, proud to know this. Uh, also, the employment, unemployment rate in Poland uh, is uh, low, uh, both for adults and youth, and which contributes to make our youth more uh, desirable uh, on the uh, labor market. Uh, SGH being a leading, a leading economic university in Poland has a strong network uh, of alumni who are employed in uh, various sectors. You can see on uh, uh, you can see on this slide uh, on your screen that uh, mostly in majority of cases our uh, alumni work in uh, business development, finance uh, and uh, operations. Uh, and uh, actually um, SDH Warsaw School of Economics, not only the best economic university in Poland, but also the oldest one. And of course, uh, um, this institution made generations of uh, successful uh, successful uh, alumni. And speaking more detailed, um, I should say that uh, one of uh, the most famous our from our alumni is uh, Leszek Belcerowicz, who used to be a uh, minister of finance uh, in Poland some years ago and uh, also as you know the government uh, in Poland uh, has changed this year and uh, the latest news that our uh, the two of our alumni uh, Paweł Karbownik for example uh, became was a point that uh, to the position of under secretary in ministry of finance and uh, Katarzyna Kaspersek was uh, appointed uh, to the position uh, of the under secretary in ministry of health and uh, mm, speaking more about the governance because this is the 
uh, the topic of uh, uh, today's meeting. Mm, I visited uh, our uh, alumni storage service that is available for everyone and you also encourage you to visit it and uh, find out more about our alumni stories and uh, I found story of uh, Katarzyna Jakimowicz. Uh, she started her uh, governance career in the Lisbon Council. This is a huge think tank uh, located uh, in Brussels and, uh, and then uh, started to work uh, in a European Commission. Uh, so this is the story that uh, actually it's one of the first uh, that you can find uh, on this page. Uh, so I encourage you to visit this uh, service. Actually, can I ask you for the next slide? Uh, yeah, uh, so shortly speaking about the career services. Uh, so of course uh, we have career service and uh, we provide consultation with career advisor, uh, advisors and uh, we help uh, our students uh, to find their way, uh, let's say. Uh, but uh, mm, actually mm, it depends uh, on you. So the opportunities are big and it depends on you uh, how to to use them. Uh, the motto of SGH is that uh, SGH shapes leaders and that's true and uh, we encourage you to start or continue your educational journey with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, and now we will like to share another um, alumni story from the School of Transnational Governance, but I have to reshare the sorry, yes. uh, the screen um, to, to include the sound. Sorry. So yes. My colleague uh, Julia will show some videos in this case uh, very briefly before showing those while uh, she's getting prepared. I can I can say that through the career services, but not only the network that we open up for our students, they and through the curricular internship also that they are doing. Uh, obviously, uh, um, this experience uh, open up um, more career possibilities. Um, the data we have of our alumni. Also, we have to say that we are a relatively fresh program. So at the moment we have two graduated class in the master program, but um, the data we collected show that 60% um, of the students already had a job after three months um, after graduation and by now um, the, 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 by before a year the totality of the student had um, a job offer and as I said before someone else mentioned there someone that we value a lot that is um, diversity intercultural um, backgrounds uh, both in cultural uh, backgrounds academic backgrounds and languages spoken so this is reflected also in the destination the students take Again, uh, through the international partnership we have, um, we have 30% uh, of the students work in the European institution, the other 13 in research or academics and consulting and the private business is also a big employer for our students um, because we are, you know, training these uh, profiles in the ready to be the bridge between public and, and private sector. Uh, we also have um, alumni in uh, UN agency, think tanks, uh, NGOs. So again, the, the, there is variety, not only in the cohorts that we are trying to recruit. On average, they speak three foreign languages, for example, but also in the choices, in the career choices that they do. This means that we are preparing them for a um, different uh, career path. Uh, now, one, um, a couple of examples. Now we have one Thomas Blackner from Germany who graduated in 2023. He had a curricular internship at the World Bank in Vienna in climate investment and then he was hired uh, he was offered a position as a consultant uh, in the World Bank and now he ended up at the European Investment Bank also in the climate and sustainability um, department 
and uh, we will show the video in a minute, but then other examples, for example, are uh, an, an Italian uh, girl, Anna Caravigna, that uh, had a curricular internship in Comunidad Andina in Peru, uh, then went to Brussels working at the European External Action Service uh, for a postgrad internship, and then was hired as a junior project manager in a, a big NGO uh, called La Palma Research Center. Then we have a Chinese uh, student, Alamana from um, Simeng, who also was very uh, keen and uh, prepared herself through the specialization in sustainability and um, climate, uh, and who ended up in a big consulting group in Brussels dealing with um, with climate finance regulation and before she was hired for a postgrad internship in the UN climate change um, group. Then we have, for example, Felipe Amoroso from Brazil that after a curricular internship at the WTO uh, is now a strategy manager uh, in, a, again, a big group, uh, um, ground funds uh, consulting group in Denmark. So just to show a bit the variety of uh, destinations that they choose and now thank you to my colleague Julia if you can show this brief testimonial in general of the program not just related to the to the career after the, the master. Personally I grew more than academically here because it just takes you out of your comfort zone right you go abroad you meet new people it's a new institution it's a new so it takes a lot of courage to come here okay. but um, in the end I think it's all worth it for me, what was always very interesting was to see the connections between the different perspective, perspectives. So like to see how policy and economics overlap, to see how policy and law overlap, to find out where the synergies are between the different disciplines and to make it work for you. Some of the gateways we have here, some of the paths or pathways we have, some of the doors they open for us. It's very special and even institutions that are very similar to the SDG cannot provide it to such an extent, I believe. Uh, thank you so much. So um, I think that uh, now we uh, should come to a conclusion because we're over time. There's still so much to discuss. And thank you for um, this great input. Um, I'd like to first thank the panelists for their contributions, but also thank the participants um, uh, for uh, for listening uh, to uh, this uh, this presentation and asking questions in the chat. Um, Please follow our CVK channels. Uh, if you want to know more about us, uh, what we do, uh, you can register to our newsletter as well um, and uh, stay up to date about events. We also open them to non CVK uh, people for, for many of them. Uh, on 10th of April, we have another information session about careers and sustainability. And on the 17th, uh, dual degrees in Europe. Um, so uh, stay tuned, uh, registered, register, please. And um, we will send you the full presentation and uh, follow up email with uh, some key information. But please uh, stay in touch. Uh, it was lovely to see you today. And um, thank you so much. Bye. Ciao. Bye, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.